there's there's amazing truth in that combination of, of the songs. There's an undercurrent of melancholy in one of the tunes and the relentless cheerfulness of the other, right? And the, the juxtaposition of them is such an amazing gift because I think it really represents what we go through as human beings. The, incredible pain and sorrow of this experience that we call life and the joy and the bliss that exists simultaneously in those moments that some of our deepest sorrows have sprung from our greatest joys and some of our most profound disappointments have led to our greatest triumphs heartbreaking strengths and an amazing, amazing gifts of vulnerability. That parallel is what I want to talk to you about today in positivity, in the idea of what it really means to be positive, to bring a positive mindset to life and to your life and into every situation. It, a couple of years ago, I did a talk about Pollyanna, how Pollyanna has become a pejorative in our culture, in our world today. Uh, it's like, oh, stop being so Pollyanna, right? Well, if you've actually ever read the book, Pollyanna absolutely knows what's going on. She's not putting blinders on to the difficulties of her life. But in the midst of all the pain and the loss, she chooses at every moment to find the one thing or the several things that can lift her spirit. And it is a conscious choice, not a na naivete. It's not a willful blindness. It is a choice to seek the highest in every moment. And it was so popular when it was first put out in uh, early 1900s that it spawned 17 sequels, the original book. And there was actually a Milton Bradley board game that was popular into the 1950s where everyone played the Pollyanna Glad game. The actual pushback against Pollyanna actually comes from this whole idea of positive thinking getting a bad rap. You just can't think your way ha to happiness. You can't think your way to being successful. And that minimizes what the teaching really is. Because we are not saying, oh, just forget your troubles, be happy. It's like, no, be happy. Be happy in the midst of everything. Find, as Deanne mentioned, that was Saren divinitus, that we're talking about joy in our rotation here uh, of core values, that that what comes up, because that is the choice we always get to make in the midst of the situation. And more important than that, it goes to our basic teaching. When our third unity principle, can anyone ever tell me, can anyone here tell me what our third unity principle is? Our beliefs and our thoughts create our experience, create our lives, right? That's our third <laughs> principle, <laughs> right? I've uh, only been sitting here in, in here for two years, so good student. And it's sometimes referred to as the law of mind action, that what we think, what we believe is the world we create. And Charles Fillmore talked about it this way, words are also seeds. When dropped into the invisible spiritual substance, they grow and bring forth after their kind. So, if words are seeds, if thoughts are seeds, what are we doing when we complain? <laughs> right? What are we doing when we are relentlessly negative? Uh, was it Nixon? The ne uh, the ne the nattering nabombs of negativity, <laughs> right? It, ironic that Richard Milhouse Nixon coined 
It was Johnson? Oh, it was Johnson, sorry. Okay. So that was Johnson. I, I, yeah. yeah. Nattering nabogs of uh, negativity. And that's how I feel sometimes about myself, about the world out there. And when I catch myself, I realize in those moments I'm believing the voice in my head. I'm believing the voice in my head is telling me, you got to watch out for that. You must be careful. You're going to get tripped up. There's something bad's going to happen if you do this. And sometimes that voice wins. You know, does anyone else have a voice in my head or is it time to lock me up? <laughs> okay, I see a couple other people, so maybe we'll all get locked up together. But that voice inside of my head, every book I read about this tells me I'm not alone in this. What's also amazing about that voice is it can take either side of the argument. One minute it'll be telling me that, you know, you really shouldn't do that everything's going to go bad, you're going to lose it all, you're going to get in trouble, you'll get caught out. And the other moment, it's telling me, go for it. You can do it, <laughs> right? What? Don't listen to that other person. <laughs> so the two voices in my side head are constantly keeping me occupied. And that's why we meditate, right? Um, a lot of people often ask, you know, I, I can't seem to stop the voice in my head, so I, I got to give up on meditation. It's like, no, that's why we're meditating, <laughs> is for that voice in our head to learn to be quiet and still. But what happens to me, and I think I've noticed it out in the world too, is we forget how often that the voice is wrong. We forget how many times it has told us erroneously that that person is doing that because they want to get you or they're doing that just for this reason or that set up against you. And on examination and consultation with actually the person there, you might find out that they have a very different intention and that they had not you in mind at all <laughs> when they were doing the things that they thought were best in their life. But sometimes we can take life personally, right? Because it seems very personal to us. What if life were just going on and you were just the observer of it? What if you just got to enjoy every moment of your life without worrying it won't last. And I know, as I look around this room, that some of us have had some incredible heartbreak. And yet, I also know from speaking to all of you that there is not one moment of those heartaches that you trade away if it took that person or that situation out of your life as well. I look at it with my son and his journey through health, wholeness, and to today, and every precious moment has been a gift to bring joy to, to bring positively, positivity to. And you, as a community, were so there, I literally could feel the love, the support, all the way in Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> surrounded by all the people in Nashville and surrounded by your prayers and your life there. The idea of bringing positivity, positive joy, love to the experiences of our lives is what makes the difference. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Positive thinking will not stop stuff from happening in your life. Do you hear that? Positive thinking is not this magic wand that we wave and poof, nothing bad is ever going to happen again. Things will happen. But that's when we need our positive thinking the most. That's when we need to step back from the voice that tells us no, stop, don't. Right? Can't, mustn't, and step forth going, 
the universe is a friendly place. The universe has my back. Everything has always worked out. It has. And if it hasn't worked out, it's not over yet. <laughs> it will work out. Right? This can't be the end because it isn't all worked out yet. There is more to be revealed for my life and for this journey that is consciousness, that is longing for you to fully participate, fully participate. And there have been a lot of parallels in this amazing journey into this building, right? So this is a little photoshopped. <laughs> For those of you who were here at the town hall meeting, that was the last slide we showed. Uh, and by the time it's finished, it won't look anything like that because we have visions of even more spectacular ideas for what we can do with the space. But the idea is just a kernel sometimes that we have to be open to. Now, the journey to last Sunday's unanimous vote was not a straight line, right? Was not always filled with joy and bliss. But we just kept going step by step, bringing our positive thinking to the situation. As Deanne has mentioned, people told us we would never get the money we got for this building. People told us you can, will not get the terms you want for the building. People told us it just is too hard in the real estate environment in San Francisco. You can't do it. And we said, okay, we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> Let's see what happens. And we got a bid, a million dollars, over our asking price, and um, almost a million dollars higher than anyone else with the terms we wanted. And we found a space that at first we said no to in our negativity, <laughs> in a moment of, oh, no, this is too much work. And then we went back to it two years later and said, well, it's just as much work as everything else that we had encountered. So why are we resisting what is? The same building, nothing had changed except the price had dropped. <laughs> Have a million dollars cheaper. So not now, but yes. <laughs> There are benefits every step along the way. Just because you don't get what you think you want right now doesn't mean you won't get it. It just may mean you're not ready or there's something else down the road waiting to unfold. And what's really funny about this process is, you know, I have Deanne next to me. I have all of my prayer partners. I have silent unity. I have all the training I have. I have to preach this stuff, and I get caught up in it too. So we were negotiating a detail of the lease back for this space and on Thursday and Friday, and I found myself triggered, unhappy, miserable, as a matter of fact, negative, <laughs> stammering, <laughs> and resentful. And as I sat in meditation and prayed, I was like, I am out of alignment. I'm believing that something is against me. Didn't matter that everything else went exactly like I thought it should go. This one little detail, as one of the players in this negotiation said, we're, we're at the one inch line. Can't we get this across the, the, to the end zone? And um, in, in, in my head, in our lawyer's head, in Deanne's head, that we had this idea that had gotten implanted and it was erroneous. And when on the phone with the, one of the principals from the other side, we found out that all the money that they had invested, the escrow they had put in this building, has gone hard, and it is ours, no matter what else happens. And we had believed that it wasn't until this one little contract was worked out. And that one little thing caused so much stress for the day. You can ask my husband. <laughs> Amen. And it's like, Oh, so I'm human, and I succumb to that. And then I got to laugh at myself and go, if I believe this, I can bring positivity to every situation. 
regardless of what happens with this neg negotiation, it is all going and is all good, right? Doesn't mean that I may not be unhappy sometime, and I want to be really clear. And that's why I love this, that song that the, our wonderful singer sang. It's like, it's okay to cry. It's okay to be sad. We're not saying to squelch. It's not spiritual bypassing. It's not pretending that you don't hurt. But the, but the tears are part of your human experience. They're part, the sadness is just as much a part of life as the joy. And if you squelch the sadness, you also are squelching the joy because they are part of a spectrum of life. And when you can allow it all to take place in your life, when you can allow it all in and keep your heart open, to keep your heart open to the people you're negotiating with, to your family member who drives you crazy, to your boss, keep your heart open to the person who you think said something that was insulting to you, and you can keep your heart open to them, you don't limit your expression and experience of joy. The second we decide that someone or something is not worthy of our love, we are calling them bad or not good enough. We are limiting the expression of our positive esteem for them. Right? Because they didn't do it exactly like I thought it should be done. And that cutting off of our own heart, our own experience of love, doesn't hurt them. Who does it hurt? And then it becomes, like we talked about with the Charles Fillmore quote, the self-fulfilling prophecy. Because we're closed and bitter, because we're shut down and unwilling to let anything in, guess what? Nothing gets in. The situation doesn't change. It doesn't shift. And we're stuck saying, see, I told you they were out to get me. Because we have set up the situation. Positive thinking is not naivete. Positive thinking is not rainbows and unicorns, it's all going to be that way for the rest of my life. Positive thinking, and I love this quote, is leadership, right? Do you want to follow the person who's going to lead you out of the trouble? Or sit and be with the person who keeps telling you how bad it is? Now, I'm not talking about other people. I'm talking about you. <laughs> You're the leader of your own life, right? Do you want to listen to that voice inside of your head that keeps telling you, no, I can't, watch out, it's dangerous? Or do you want to e elevate, promote, give greater stature to that voice and that idea that tells you, this is good. It is all going to work out. I am doing a great job. I am. Are you? Do you know that you're doing a great job? Do you know that you're loving who you are and what you give to your family each and every day is a miracle? Do you know you're an extraordinary human being that the world would suffer without your love and joy and presence in it? Do you know that no matter what mistakes you have ever made, that you are miraculous? Do you know that when you spread your joy, your happiness, your bliss, the room changes, the energy of the whole world gets moved? That's what positivity is. When we bring that person up to the CEO level of our existence, doesn't mean that things won't happen or that things don't need to be adjusted or overcome, but you're promoting the one who can get you through the valley of the shadow. And just to point out that quote from Psalm 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it's only a shadow. It's not actually death. <laughs> you can't die. 
Get that? You cannot be destroyed. You are eternal life in this form. It's a shadow. It's an illusion of separation of death. And even though we walk through it, we stay positive because the divine prepares a feast for us, a feast for us in the presence of our thoughts of enmity, a feast for us in the presence of the thoughts that something or someone is against us, a feast for us of the beautiful joys of these babies. This, this community now is filled with babies, right? Wow. There is more to life than we can ever dream of. So I can put signs on that building. I can put plans together. I can envision it. And it pales in comparison to what the universe has in store for us. If we say yes, if we say love to everyone, if we say I accept every step, along the way and keep promoting the CEO. I loved this image. Just think positive. In the midst of each and everything, in each and every moment of your life, elevate that person and that voice and find your way through anything. Let's take that to our time of meditation.